In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a Ruby on Rails based content management system called Spina CMS. It promises to be easy to set up and modular, making it easy to configure and build onto with your own plugins. So let's go ahead and get started with a new project going Rails new and we'll call it Spina CMS dash sample. I'm going to clean up the gem file a bit and add the Spina gem. I'm also going to set up a Docker file just for running our Postgres database. This is a practice that I've been doing a lot lately. I use a separate Docker container for each individual project's database because it helps me avoid any problems that I might encounter with database versions and it allows me to standardize how I handle the data dependencies across projects. By the way, my goal in making these videos is to provide a high level overview of these tools for developers with an intermediate level of skill. So I tend to gloss over these small details such as the specific commands that I'm running in Docker Compose. If you want me to elaborate on any one item, feel free to leave me feedback in the comments. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get back to running bundle install. And now we can run the rails generate spina install command, which will start the installation process for copying a basic setup of spina into our rails project. And I run into the first error of this installation. Something is going wrong with a dependency called mobility. Mobility is a tool that sets up your database tables to have multiple versions of your data written in different languages. It powers a feature in Spina, allowing you to have an English version of your website and then be able to display the same pages in different languages for different countries. After a little bit of digging around, it seems that the author of the mobility gem did a breaking upgrade that Spina was not equipped yet to handle. The project authors already know about this problem and recently merged a pull request into the master branch which fixes it. But that code is just sitting in the master branch or maybe even the alpha branch, but it hasn't been yet deployed to an official release. So what I can do to hack around this problem is to look into the pull request for the mobility change, find the updated code for that broken initializer, and copy the new setup from the patch template. Here we can see those changes to the initializer's mobility.rb template file, and there's also rake task to update as well. So this means that the default version of Spina pulled down from RubyGems, which is the 1.2 release, is essentially broken because the mobility dependency it's pulling down is incompatible. The project creators could have probably preempted this by specifying a maximum version number in the gem spec dependencies, but no worries. To fix this, I updated the mobility initializer file in my project by affecting the same changes as the pull request. Remember, this is one of the files that the Spina install rake task copied from the Spina gem into my project. And to preempt further issues from obsolescence, I went ahead and set up my gem file to use the latest code in the master branch of Spina. This is fine for development, but for production setting, you probably want to specify a specific commit or tag to lock onto just to make sure you don't accidentally pull any unexpectedly different code updates from the latest master. Now let's try to run Rails Spina install again. It's prompting me for details now, like the website name to populate and its templates. Let's try to make this demo look like a homeowner association website called Arcadia HOA. And we set up the administrator account and password for our local instances. Now let's try to run the Rails server and take a look at the base website. And it looks like Webpacker failed to build in an earlier step because my node version is incorrect. I think this is a problem I ran into in my previous video about Webpacker. I should really get that NVM updated. So let's go ahead and fix that and also lock to the current stable version of Node by creating a .nvmrc file. Also, I gotta run Yarn. So let's try to run this Rails server again. Webpacker installs successfully and we can run the Rails server. So let's go visit localhost 3000 in our web browser. The first thing we get is an assets not pre-compiled error. This seems to be related to a configuration problem with the Rails asset pipeline. It's a little perplexing why I get this error in development mode since it should be compiling any linked assets on the fly, 
but I'm not going to worry about that because I'd rather be using Webpacker instead of Sprockets anyway. See my recent video on Webpacker in Rails 6 for more on how I do this. But in short, I want to create a blank application SCSS file in the JavaScript directory used by Webpacker and adjust my template references accordingly. Note where the application HAML layout file is situated in the file system. It's under a default directory, which corresponds to the theme that we're using in Spina, named default. So now we can bring this up in the web browser and see a very plain, basic landing page. If we want to add styling to this page, we would modify the application layout and other template files that I just showed you in the default directory. It would be a very similar process to what we did in part two of my Refinery CMS review, where I showed you how to integrate Twitter Bootstrap with custom styling and also modified the menu presenter, which creates the HTML wrapping menu items. Spina uses a very similar design pattern in Refinery when it comes to this sort of template rendering, so I recommend taking a look at that video for more information. Now let's take a look at how we would make changes to the website content as an end user. First, we go to the admin URL and type in the credentials that we've established earlier. Now we can see the admin panel for all the site pages with home page being the only one so far. By default, Spina specifically sets up a root page called home page. You can't delete the home page and certain routes in the configuration point to this page specifically by name. From a design perspective, I kind of dislike the idea of hard-coded concepts like this but it is what it is and at least we know it's here. So let's try to modify the content by adding some text and we can refresh the page in our web browser to see the newly added text. Now let's create a second page called Neighborhood Rules. I'm going to populate it with some information and now when we go back to reload the website, we can see the newly added page on the navigation menu. Each page has a few options that you can set for how it displays. These affect how, or if it appears in the navigation, what it will look like when you load it, and some metadata. Let's change the navigation title on the home page to Landing, and bring it up. As you can see, the name Landing is in the menu item list, but when you go to the page, it still has a title heading Home Page. Now let's try to put some media on these pages. I'd like to add an image to our Neighborhood Rules page, but first, we have to enable the prerequisite Active Storage, which is a system used by Rails 6 and Spina to perform the storage and processing of uploaded media. It's included in the Rails 6 Ruby gem, but not enabled by default. We have to enable it by running Rails Active Storage install, which installs the migrations for the Active Storage blobs data tables, which Rails uses to keep track of where it's putting the uploaded files. Also, you need to add the image processing gem to your gem file, which is the dependency of active storage. It auto-generates into your gem file when you start a new Rails project, but it's commented out. If you don't uncomment this line, you'll receive this error message that the image processing gem is missing when you try to upload a file. Also, the image processing gem requires us to install yet another dependency, image magic, which I'm going to install in my development environment using the Debian app package manager. I feel like these steps were kind of left out in the official Spina install guides. It would have saved me some struggling through a few error messages if these dependencies were noted in the documentation. Now I'm going to try adding an image to the page. An interesting thing to note is that Spina CMS uses the tricks editor to provide this interface for modifying our content. It's a project created by Basecamp, which shares many of the same developers as the Ruby on Rails platform. Let's try to add this image using the interface, and we get yet another error. I'll save you the details of how I went about fixing this problem, but to make a long story short, I had to dig through the stack trace and found that the attachments controller wanted to render a response for which there wasn't a template. There was a JavaScript response in the program, but not an HTML one and it came down to the form with call within the Spina administration panel, which wasn't telling the web server that this was an Ajax call. It was missing a flag for local false, which turns the form submission into Ajax. I submitted a pull request fixing this bug in the project, and it's been successfully merged. 
Now image uploading and display works as expected. By the way, something interesting that I don't see here is a way of changing the size of the image. It would be nice if they could give you some CSS options to automatically adjust the size and give you those options in the control panel, but I guess that's something that we could easily add later. Now the last feature that I want to explore for this review is the document attachment part of the media library. Let's add this PDF file to our document repository and go back to the page editor. Notice how Trix has a button for including images, but not for other types of media. To include that, you have to enable the file attachment page part on your page templates. Now, this kind of touches on the modularity of Spina, which I think gives it good potential for expansion to a variety of uses. What we're going to do here is modify our default.rb configuration file by adding the page part and making this page part of the show default page template. Once that's done, we should be able to see a file attachment section to our pages, which allows us to pick the file that we uploaded earlier. We also have to modify the Haml template that renders the page to include a section for file attachments that the users can see. And now when we reload the page, we should be able to see our file attachment link and click to view it. Well, that concludes my review of Spina CMS for today. I actually have more ideas for exploring the CMS system, which I'll save for later videos. Hit the like button, the bell, and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when that content becomes available. For now, I'll say that I really like the interface and features provided by Spina CMS, but as with other CMS platforms I've tried out, I ran into quite a few hiccups in trying to get it to work. Part of that may be that the project needs some polishing by its project maintainers, and part of it might just be that Rails itself now has more complicated dependencies than ever, as it tries to adapt to the latest trends in modern web development. Stay tuned for more videos like this coming soon, and I'll see you next time.